They're saying that he's not a man or a woman, he's not, but that's just the that's way, just the way in which the words. Because the other option is not using any pronouns at all, only using nouns. And they don't, they but are. in language, if, if I keep using nouns without a pronoun, you will see how difficult it gets. That's the reason why we have pronouns. We say he, she, it, they, we, us, rather than just by names, individuals. We resort to now pronouns for, for a reason. So when the pronouns are used, it is not because he's a male gender, but I'm absolutely say it's male. So God, now see how, how it feels if I use this okay, for the character. God is one and only. Because he because he you see? Because God is one and only, God has to be absolute. If God is one and only and absolute, he cannot be born because there will be someone else who is born from, then he will be dependent on someone else. If he also gives birth or produces something, then there's something like God. So if God is one and only and absolute and independent, not born, doesn't give birth, can there be any likeness to God in any way, shape or form? There cannot be. So this concept of God, we deeply reflect, your heart and your mind will say, yes, I can accept that. This is how, if I were to believe in God, that's what God should be. That's how God should be like. Why, why, as I said, no one, no one really knows the fact what God is and what, and what, how what makes you believe in the world. Okay, so why, let's why, address why, this why, why can't I believe that this idea of God is not right and why can't I believe? Because you I have, have to, to give you reasons. I feel like you, you're not... No, because because I... I feel like you're, you're sometimes you're discounting the, like, the, the, the world and the, all the things that happen in the world on, on people's opinions. Give um, oil. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Put an alternative concept of God. And let's discuss this too. In you said it to me. This. You said it to me. You said God is energy. Do you remember when we spoke? You said I believe God is just uh, an energy around us. We are just atoms of energy. So yeah, I can't. I can't. I don't. I don't that's the thing. I don't have a. I don't have a specific. Uh, specific and like what's the word? Like uh, I haven't decided on a. You know, it's the intuition, it's a feeling, and you yeah. can like describe it. You I, 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 if you were, so you were talking before, like you said, uh, if you believe in God, you just feel that it, that's right, like this is the right way. You just feel you, it's okay. in your heart. You so, don't really have a reason for it, and that's the same. Yeah, yeah, you realize yeah. you're so, not far off the Muslim narrative by saying energy. You're not that far off. Yeah, let's, no. Let, let's, yeah. let's talk about this energy. This energy. We say God possesses energy and you say God is energy. The difference at the moment. This energy has to be either conscious, self-aware, or not conscious and not self-aware. That's the two options. If you say this energy is not conscious, not self-aware, then this energy cannot bring about anything, cannot do anything. But I don't think it has, I think like, the energy is everything, everything. Yeah. Like it's infinity, it's us, it's sure. not conscious, it is conscious, it's like it's everything and it can see, really be You see, described. in our yeah, world, yeah, yeah. I, I, changes happen constantly, transformation from one form to the other, matter, energy into conversion, one form to the other, how things like, you know, how human beings start from a baby and, and grow older and older and older and eventually we die and that's it. There's a process of change and transformation. This process is either directed, willed, or it just happens by itself through this energy. Either the energy is directing it to happen because it's self-aware, it has a goal or a direction or a plan, or it just happens without it knowing or interfering, it just happens. Now, which one makes more sense is the question. Let me give you an example to illustrate my point. Imagine there is a kitchen where you cook. Do you cook? Sometimes. Now, so he finds your kitchen, comes to the kitchen, and he sees everything's there. There is a cooker, there is a lighter to light the cooker. Gas, gas cooker. There's a fridge, he opens it, there's milk, there's a cupboard and shower and there's tea and tea bags and there are cups and plates and there's water in the sink. 
And he says, okay, I want a cup of tea. How many sugars do you like? Two sugars. And he waits there. He waits and he waits. You, the willing agent, the one who transforms, the one who directs, the one who changes, the one who brings about, yeah? You're not there, okay? You're just watching. He waits and waits and waits. Days goes by, months goes by, years goes by, eons goes by, eons. His tea doesn't get produced. Why so? Because there is no willing agent to will to bring all of this together to make tea. Because a conscious agent needs to will this to happen. He's intending it, he wants it. But there's no one else doing it for you. Because you are the chef, for example, you're the cook, you're not bringing them together, you haven't willed it. This tea will never happen. Doesn't matter, you sit there for infinity. You need a conscious, willing agent to bring all this element, open the fridge door, bring the milk out, and have the sink, water in the kettle, put it in the cooker, light the cooker, the gas, flames, boils, bring the tea bags, put it. All of these requires conscious processes by a will. If you believe in an energy, which is in control of this universe, or not in control of the universe, then without consciousness and will, nothing will happen. It will be like just energy, but no transformation. The fact that we have transformation happening and changes happening tells us that there is a controller, a mover, a director, a, an organizer. And that's where we say this organizer is what we say God who possesses, the creator who possesses this energy. Yes, the creator is not without energy, he possesses the energy. He creates. So the difference is subtle, but it's quite important. The energy and the creator, the difference being someone or something that is self-aware, conscious and has a will. So we say the creator created us with a will for a reason. Our fingerprints testify that we are created for a reason because it's all unique. If it was just by pure chance and coincidence, two fingerprints should be the same by coincidence. We have established forensic science where we use this as evidence. If the fingerprints match, it doesn't match with someone else's because our fingerprints are unique. God actually refers to this. People will reflect and think, you know, do you really think that when you are dead and you're rotten, some people say, when you die, when you're dead, that's it? He will not bring you back there? He's not going to gather you back together? He says, no. Certainly he will. Certainly he will. Even to the very tips of your fingers. Maybe nothing special about it. Maybe there is something special about the tips of your fingers. Okay, God alludes to this point and we know why, because it's very unique. He will bring you back again to the second life, yeah, again. As unique as you were, He can bring you back again, no problem. Because God says, He created you first time, He will create you again. Is it difficult? If He creates you first time, He has all this blueprint. If you make something first time, is it difficult or easier to make something like it again? easier. That's what God tells us to think. If you are created again, why do you then say that there is no afterlife? When you die and that's it? No. There will be justice. There will be a day of judgment where the bad and the wicked don't get away. They will be accountable for what they have done. And the good people, like yourself, the good people will be rewarded for their good. But the wicked people will have their justice. See, they may be punished for what they have done. Yeah? And this is what justice demands, punishment for the people who have done something evil. Imagine someone who is a serial rapist, killer, child molester, you know, ethnic cleansing, whatever, right? And he gets away, lives like a king, dies like a king. What do you, Where is the justice? What do you, uh, how would you, what, what, what is the line for that, for that justice, would you say? So, would you say, you know, like a, a rapist, a, what is, is someone that is someone that um, doesn't follow a lot of the so stuff in the Quran? I, I got you a question. Someone. So justice means again, you will be accountable for your actions. The actions have to be told to you first. 
which ones are acceptable and which ones not. Otherwise, it's meaningless to go and suddenly say, I'm going to punish you for that when you didn't know whether it was acceptable. So, so, so say someone's raised, raised without much of a, they're, they're raised without parents, they don't have anyone uh, instilling. To tell them right, instilling, them, yeah, right from wrong. Yeah, them right from wrong, instilling a religion like, like a lot of like good Muslims and good Christians do. And say they sin in their life, how would you... How would you say that, that so, God, of course, is ultimately the judge and the arbiter, an arbitrator in terms of you know, settling the dispute. And he is the owner and the master of the day of judgment. He will, just, uh, he will judge justly. No one will be unjustly treated. That means if an individual, if an individual, let me give you an extreme. If an individual were somewhere in a, in a Aborigines or something. Somewhere not, you know, you know, in, 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 in a, like an Eskimo individual, there's only a few people, and no prophet and messenger came, and they left, no one, there's no guidance, no book. Um, and the only tools they have is the intellect. They will be only judged as per the use of the intellect. They cannot be judged otherwise, like, oh, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Because they didn't even know what to do. Okay? That is why in one of the chapters in the Quran, we've got in a clarifies this position. That this is called, I mean, it's interesting because this is a question people often have. This is in Surah al -Mun. I'll show you this. It's very interesting. I asked this question when I was 10. Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like, say someone was taught bad or to, to, they, were, they were brought up with a, a father or mother that was someone that was like, immoral and didn't really have a good God. Okay. Yeah. They're taught wrong their whole life. So, I'm just reading the relevant parts, right? So there are some people who will be deserving to go to a punishment because of their actions and beliefs. So he's describing those individuals. And for those who disbelieved in their Lord, is the punishment of hell and um, disbelief. They believe, disbelief, didn't believe. Don't, don't, don't believe in God. Disbelief in the law, meaning they didn't believe in the Creator and all his actions, they didn't believe in the laws or the guidance. But it has to be made clear to them. Right? Wretched is the decision. When they are thrown into it, meaning the hellfire, they hear from it a dreadful meaning why what is up. It's like a fire furnace, like they can, they can feel it, hear it. It almost burns with rage. Every time a company is thrown into it, it, it keeper, keepers acts there. So there are gatekeepers of Hellfire. <laughs> Did they not come to your warning? So even the gatekeeper tells the people, you are now going to be in Hellfire. Did no one warn you about the Hellfire? Meaning, did you not have this message? <laughs> what did they say? Or then what they will say? They will say, yes. A warner had come to us, but we denied and said, Allah, is the name of God, has not sent down anything. You are not but in great error. So they will say, yes. There was a prophet or a messenger or a warner, but we didn't believe in them. We denied them. We rejected them. And we said, God doesn't reveal anything. God doesn't send any prophets and messengers. God doesn't send any scripture or any guidance. God doesn't send anything. You are in plain error. A lot of people say that. <laughs> and they will then say, if only we had been listening or reasoning, we would not be among the companions of the place. If we listened and we heard the prophets and the messengers, or we were reasoning, using our intellect, we would not have ended in this place. This is the role of the intellect God had given us to use. If you use your intellect, you would not worship a tripod. You would not worship a tree. You would not worship a tree or a half elephant and a half man. You would not. Using the intellect properly and in sound way, you would not worship anything of the creation. The only thing that your intellect will tell you that is worthy of worship is nothing except the creator of this universe, this cosmos. If you use this intellect and no prophet and messenger came and you said, there is a God, I submit and surrender. You already have believed in him and you, this is, this is your, your, you know, your judgment is not going to put you in hellfire because you have arrived to the right conclusion that there is a creator who is one and only an so where it says about um, 
Yeah. So in, in Islam, a disbeliever is a kafir. Probably heard, heard this word. Oh, you are a kafir. You are a kafir. A kafir linguistically means someone who covers covers a farmer is called a kafir. Why? Because they cover the soil with the earth, knowing the soil is there, knowing the earth is covering. So there is knowledge involved in this action. A kafir in Islam, in its technical meaning, someone who knows the truth and then rejects it. So the question that we were discussing, if someone doesn't know the truth, you How cannot can you, technically say can this person know, is a kafir. How can you know the truth? Sure, because what you, what you just said, I feel like, is a conflicting interest because you said, you said uh, God will send uh, a prophet to you, to you to a messenger of prophet to you teach you how to live your life, but you also have your own intellect. That will, that's, you said that uh, your intellect is in, influenced by God and your, your intellect is like yeah, I'm not so the same excuse mind. me, are you um she's focusing so just uh, Yeah no I'm too, I can't talk to her. Can I talk to you? Yeah she's, she's got she's got a mind of her I thought she was listening, but up to you. Yeah. Yeah. The reason I say that there are some people here in the park just to introduce you to park dynamics. Um, I come here to go tell about Islam and present Islam to people and reason with people about Islam. The lady so here, can I finish? Her, can I finish? You see, she's not even allowed to speak. She's got a mind of it. You uh, into my I, I know, I can't talk to her but I'm I just explaining to the lady who, choose who she, who she wants to speak to. You choose who you want to speak to. No one's going to speak to her. But what I'm saying simply, she's a Christian missionary. Like we are Islamic, uh, you can call it Muslims who have come here to share the message of Islam. Yeah, yeah. She's can here to share... Can you carry on the conversation yeah, can I just, can and can stop making it about... My friend, oh, just one second. Excuse me. Do you, do you see the problem? Carry on the conversation. She is asking a question. No, no, no. Exactly. Uh, so go and ask and then go. Thank you. No, I'm going to be oh, here. Oh, she's going to be here. Well. So that's why I'm saying... Carry on the... No, no, no. no. That's what I'm saying. So it is it is not proper This is this that while you were listening, she is trying to interrupt this discussion and talk about Christianity by all means go ahead right but we'll talk about just being real. I'm just, I'm, I'm just no showing you how you know you know come on have your own discussion yeah, let, yeah? go ahead let's just, let's just carry on so so what I'm saying is go ahead I feel like what you're no, no, saying. Up to you. I, I feel like what in what you're saying there's conflict, conflicting interest. In, which was because you said um, about with Omar, the, uh, God will send a, a messenger. Or a prophet, messenger and using the intellect. And then and then you also said that our intellect can be influenced by by God. And, um, no, 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 no. I, I said we have to use the intellect. The Quran reprimands. You know, reprimands us for not using the intellect. The Quran says there are people who worship the idols and those people say we've seen our forefathers worshiping the idols and the Quran says what if your forefathers were wrong? They're never going to use your sense. They could be wrong too. You can't just simply say I was born in a family of people who worship a monkey and I'm worshiping a monkey. What happened to your intellect? So God constantly wants us to use the faculty of intellect to revive us in the right thinking. But intellect has its limitation. You say that the intellect tells, tells one thing and it's the same forever. No, no, intellect intellect, a sound intellect would not contradict God's revelation. Like the example we said about God being unknowledgeable. How do you define a sound, how do you define a sound intellect? Yeah. So the sound intellect, give an example of a sound intellect. God is unknowledgeable for all the time. Then he comes down and he's ignorant. The sound intellect will tell you all knowledgeable means all time, all knowledgeable, not five minutes ignorance. But if someone says, I'm using the mind, just because the book says so, I'm going to accept it. It's God became ignorant for 33 years or whatever. That's not the use of a sound intellect. Because you are now leaving the use of the intellect, suppressing it, and then subscribing to what a particular book may say because you're giving priority to this book and saying no this takes priority even though your mind does understand that there's a contradiction yeah so sound intellect would not contradict god's true revelation this is one of the principles that you should go by
because otherwise you can believe in anything. Like I, I, I half elf and half monkey got and say yeah. Okay, so my I, my intellect. So my intellect is my understanding of what my intellect is. It's like my logic is. You know the faculty I mean? so, of your yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. So so I'm not a I'm not a practicing. I don't practice any religion. I'm not a practicing Muslim or anything like that. So does that mean I'm not? I don't know. It doesn't really. Well, no, what it means is, my, my intellect tells me that not everything to not believe everything in these religions. So, so that, your does intellect that make me a disbeliever? Or that mean if you use your intellect as you are using it, you would know all of these religious ideas and ideologies cannot be all true. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So already use the intellect. So that means. Which one is the truth you need to decipher and filter out? You can use your intellect to filter out, and this was the process that we were showing earlier on, in terms of which makes sense of it. Okay? Your intellect will then direct you and saying, you know, this doesn't make sense, God is unknowledgeable, not unknowledgeable. God is like a pervert watching naked women having a bath, and so on. So there is this intellect role that you can clearly use, and then, then say, look, let me now look at this book. Book is something that God supposedly had sent and revealed through the prophets and messengers to guide us to. How does this book tell me about Himself and about everything else? Right? Does it tell me that I'm created? I'm already doomed. He's created me, and I'm already doomed. I'm already guilty. Imagine you open a bank account, and then the next one they tell you, "Okay, you're in debt, my friend. One million pounds." Just feed the debt into your account. You'd say, how is that? That is unjust. I've just opened a bank account. It should be blank, yeah, empty. And then I can put my money in, take my money out. But if you're already guilty, like many religions, I don't want to have to name them anymore. There are many religions who say, you are already guilty of a crime that you did not commit. You weren't even there. Someone ate the apple, the fruits. Do you have an, do you have an example? No, we're talking about Adam and Eve, the first parents. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were there in a garden, and they, because of their lapse and you know uh, weakness, being also deceived in addition by uh, Shaitan, Satan, they fall short of the requirements, and they disobeyed an action of God, a, a, a command of God. They ate of this tree, and now a religious tradition, a big religious tradition, says. You are all guilty, every one of you. You are going to be punished to death unless someone else, like me, God, die for you. Now I see that look, this is problematic to the very core, one after the other. Firstly, how can I be guilty of a crime that I didn't commit? I wasn't there. I did not have any involvement. You see, an action has to be done by a willing agent who is also capable. Can you make me guilty for not saving someone being run over by a bus? The only way I can save is having wings and flying over there. How can I be held accountable and guilty and punishable by death because I could not save someone in Brighton? I cannot simply go and fly because I don't have wings or transport myself. So not only that I have to have the will, but I have the capacity and the, and the ability. Eating of the apple, I wasn't there. I didn't intend it to happen. I didn't eat it myself. So how can I be guilty of that crime which I didn't commit? That is unjust. It's injustice to the very core. Second point. The only way then I can be saved for a crime that I did not commit, you know how? It's by the God who created me. He commits suicide. He says, I'm going to kill myself to save you. It's even more unjust. God creates you in your weakness where you commit uh, actions which is not up to the standard and then God saves you by killing himself, punishing himself. Does it make sense to you? That's why I'm saying religious traditions must be used and looked at properly and then say, look, what is the concept of God? What is the concept of sin and salvation? What is the concept of heaven and hell? Is there justice there or is it just like everyone goes to heaven? I'm not talking about your belief, or am I talking about your belief? I'm just talking about a religious tradition. Everyone goes to heaven, or everyone goes to hell. Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course you can. So, um, you just said that it's unfair, right? For someone else, other people to go to hell because of each other people. Is that what you, I said, I said it's unfair. I said, 
You should not be punished for someone else's crime. Right, okay. So is it fair? So according to Islamic tradition, in Sahih Muslims, Christians are going to be put in hell for the sake of Muslims. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you, you, you know, you can open up references like yeah, you always do, like you always do. You misinterpret. I've got it. It says Christians are going to be sent to hell on behalf of Muslims. There, the reference. Is there. Okay, I'll read. I'll read it out. Let's read and have a look. But even that, if you look at it, how can the Christians go to hell because of what? Someone else. What? Repeat what you just said before you. Uh, no, 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 let me, let me. No, no, repeat what you just said. On behalf first. of the Muslims, yeah. They yeah, will go so, to the Christians so, um, to hell. Yes. Allah is going to put Christians in hell for the sake of Muslims. What do you mean sake of? In, in, instead of Muslims. Explain what do you mean instead of? Are you saying instead of like uh, so, Muslims that are No, no, you know what, let me read it. So, I'm not so you've read it but you don't remember? No, no I remember it. I'm saying that. Please, please, please. please. Your what? text will be clear, right? So I want you to um, show me a text which has Arabic as well so I can read the Arabic. Because very often we see here in the park, people have a translation which is also... No, no, translation doesn't... No, I didn't translate. No, 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 no. Translate, translation doesn't do justice to the topic because this is the baggage that we build in, what it says. That's why I had to re refer to the footnotes when I was chapter 1 and 12. This seeking eternal refuge means what? He is perfect, absolute, independent. That's what the word means in Arabic language. They can't put all of their that's why they put it in the footnotes, this is what it means. So even if you had something like this in a hadith, you know, we will check the Arabic. And then we can explain it to you what the hadith really means. No, it's funny, I watched this all on YouTube when I came out. So while you're finding it, it is not fair to punish someone for someone else's crime. It will be unjust. God says it's not unjust in any way to his worshippers. It doesn't. Because otherwise you will say, that, how can I be punished for someone else's crime? So when we're talking about filtering the religion, look at the concept of God. So when you look at the Quran and it makes sense to you and the Quran provides you additional evidence for itself, then you can be sure and you can have that conviction. Remember we're talking about how can I be sure? How can I be sure with certainty that this is it? Because I can't just say otherwise. Absolutely right. If you're not sure, then you cannot say you're wrong, you're wrong, you're this, you're bad. You can't say that. You can only say once you're absolutely sure that in my understanding of things, I think this is true. Based on that, this is not true and this is not correct. This is not true. Does the, uh, does the Quran say like uh, what you don't follow is not what you don't um, Okay, so Islam says very clearly, surely the only acceptable religion or way of life is Islam, is sincere, pure submission to God. And whoever seeks any other way other than Islam, it will never be accepted of them. Never be accepted of them. That means, according to the Islamic teaching, the only acceptable ideology, way of life, religion, is the one which is sincere, pure, humble submission to the one and only God. If you submit and surrender to something else, you will never be accepted. If you worship a phone, or a man, or a woman, or a football star, whatever, you will never be accepted. God is not going to accept this, because he created us for a purpose. If we don't fulfill the purpose, then we will have to meet the consequence. So, uh, of the Muslim like most religions, that's, say, yeah, that's yeah. common so, to most so religions, I people are born into a family. Yeah, so I say that, so if I'm, if I'm not brought up in an uh, Islamic household, I'm not, I'm not brought up as families growing up, how can I be expected to, and I'm 19 years old, I have my own life outlook in the world, and they might conflict with some, someone. It depends now who we're talking about. If it's you, for example, 
You have the whole world at your doorstep or at your fingertips. You are constantly watching on social media, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, whatever, whatever, right? The whole world, information-wise, at your fingertips. That means, that, no, no, that means if you used your internet, you should have used and said, okay, there are more than one quarter of the world's population who believes in one God. Why? You ask. They believe in one God, which makes sense to me. They don't believe in three in one God. They don't believe in multiple gods. They don't believe in, in, in idols. So a lot of people do believe. No, I'm saying when you yourself were to ask these questions, you using your intellect with them coming to a point where you will not have an excuse saying, I, I didn't know, no one told me, because the information is now bombarded to you from everywhere. Look, you came to Speaker's Corner, guess what happened? You came to Speaker's Corner, information came to you. You didn't come to the information, information came to you from us. Information has always been passed on to us, whether we've been bombarded with information, passively or actively, always. But if it was a 90-year-old woman or a man in a home who have no information because she or he doesn't look into the internet or have access to a library, doesn't have a copy of the Quran and so on, it's totally different. Because how much of the information did they have access to? You can only be judged with the information that you've been accessible to yourself, like you said about the intellect is also there. So if that individual using the intellect realize I can't worship a tree or a monkey or an elephant or a human being or God is a trinity, whatever, then you already see that these, these people they have judgment, they'll be in a positive light. Why? Because they are coming closer to the understanding of God is. That's how much the intellect can arrive to. Your intellect cannot come to the conclusion about that God is this, 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 everything. There's a limitation of intellect. There's a role that intellect can play, but it cannot answer all your questions. Yeah? But intellect can then also, at the same time, reject many of these concepts about God. So it might not affirm all of them, but it can reject a lot of those false concepts. That's where then when you look at the revelation, the revelation will confirm your intellectual thinking, intellectual guidance, and then say, I accept, I submit, I surrender. Because you are the only one worthy of worship, no one, no one else. That's why the process of the process of accepting Islam in our tradition, you know what it is? It's the first one is of negation. You have to negate nothing worthy of worship. La ilaha. Unconditional, that's it. There's nothing worthy of worship. So imagine everything, nothing. Man, woman, tree, flag, nation, pop star, star celebrities, nothing worthy of worship. And then you affirm, but the one and only true God. That's the process of uh, accepting Islam. So there is this role where intellect and the guidance plays hand in hand. No, no, reason, no, no wonder God didn't just leave with our intellect only. He sent prophets and messages.